Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is One of One, but you can call me Seven, and Dadu says it best here. We're getting confused. Uh, we're trying to figure out the the consequences of, of time leaping, and we're also trying to figure out who's going to do it, uh, because there's a lot of uh, existential questions about whose memories get erased and what's where the self actually resides and stuff like that but I'm hoping that we get the opportunity to try I mean you know it's scary and stuff and uh, excuse me Rintaro has been getting definitely death threats but we need to push on right because he's a mad scientist I think Mikey's a mad scientist and we've got all this stuff going on with Suzuha and we don't even know what the hell is happening with Moika but we gotta press forward, so let's do it. It sounds like we're talking about the soul. Isn't that a religious question? Wait. You guys are misunderstanding something. One hour isn't enough time for your personality to change. You should be the same person one hour ago that you are now. I mean, it kinda depends on what happens in that hour, right? The only difference is that you'll have an extra hour's worth of memories. How can you be sure? Well, I can't. Nobody's tried it before, exactly, yeah. This discussion's going nowhere, you guys are going in circles. Personality and consciousness can't be strictly defined, so it's hard to imagine what might happen. So, which is it? We don't know. We can argue the theories all we want, but in the end, we can only guess. This experiment may end up shattering preconceptions scientists and philosophers have held for centuries. We won't know until we try. That pretty much sums it up. That's what I was saying. To make matters worse, the subject must be prepared to risk damage to their psyche. Kudusu, Daru, and I say no more. We can't solve this problem. This is our limit as scientists. But haven't we accomplished enough already? The time leap machine itself is worthy of a Nobel Prize. We could sell this technology for billions if we so chose. And if we go public with a time leap machine, we can break CERN's monopoly on time travel technology. That's enough. It has to be. Hey, Mayuri, who's been observing the discussion with glassy eyes, opens her mouth to speak. What's your idea, Mayuri? Why don't we make a banana time leap instead? A banana doesn't have memory, sorry man. Oh my itty. Bananas don't have brains like people do. Oh, you need a brain, huh? My itty never changes. The atmosphere in the room gets a little more relaxed. Let's not experiment. We'll entrust the time leap machine to a suitable research institution. Then we'll announce it to the world. That doesn't sound like you, Rintaro. That doesn't sound like you, man. What the hell? Thanks to the lightning of the mood, I can finally say what was on my mind. Neither Kudisu nor Daru objects. No. No way. There's no shot, right? Someone's got to do something. Either someone gets desperate or something. somebody feels like they actually have to do something because they're obligated to or whatever. Or someone knows something, right? Um, there's no way that they just hand it over to someone. That can't happen. Ridiculous as it sounds, I can't shake the feeling that it might suck my memories out and fling them into the past. Oh, the machine does have its appeal, of course. We're all tempted by the idea of becoming humanity's first time leapers. Yet the fear of what could happen won out in the end. Perhaps as a way to forget our fears and move on, we decide to hold a celebration to mark the completion of the device. Everyone feels the need to let loose after working so hard on the project. Huh. I have Dadu order pizza while Kudisu and I go shopping for snacks. I'm suspicious. Occupy's always had a lack of supermarkets. That hasn't changed even with the anime stores gone. After we finish shopping, Kudisu and I walk along the evening streets. You good, dude? She looks like she's got something to say. She keeps stealing glances at me. Are you upset? Upset? She frowns like she didn't expect that question. Finally, she faces this way. About our decision not to attempt a time leap experiment. No. Not upset. Humans are temporal beings. That's a Heidegger quote. I was actually relieved when you made the decision not to use the machine. If you hadn't been there, I might not have been able to stop myself. Thank you. What's this? Gratitude? Also, as I've been saying, uh, what Suzu has said about Makise and her intentions has been sitting in the back of my mind. So, does she have a fever? I put my hand to her forehead to check. Kuri see twitches. Hey, what are you doing? You're talking like an assistant for a change. I thought you might have a fever. I dropped my hand. I'm not grateful to you or anything. Ah, tsundere, tsundere. <laughs> her voice is louder than it should be, and several people glance at us. Kudusu blushes and hangs her head. If Dada were here, he'd probably get all excited and say, There you go. Yeah, tsundere. It's exactly what I said. 
Anyway, Kurisu clears her throat and returns to her usual sour expression. That thank you was just a formality, don't get me wrong, okay? Of course, I only did what I had to. I am the founder of the Future Gadget Lab, Oin Kyoma. My first priority is to protect the welfare of my lab mates. So I have no need for your thanks. And yet you always talk about plunging the world into chaos. You are my allies and the world is my enemy. I'm speechless. You're too self-righteous. You say speechless, let you're speaking. Don't argue semantics. It's quite mysterious, really. It's only been two weeks since Kudisu and I met, and yet it already feels natural for us to be walking together exchanging banter like this. Suzuha, why... Why are you bringing this up now? It's like you're watching us. Why are you bringing this up when I'm talking to, 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 to Kudisu? Alright, well... Perhaps pooling our efforts to create something new, dangerous though it may be, has brought us closer together. I admit that her knowledge and skills are impressive. I'd like her to remain at the lab at all, if at all possible, but she said she's going back to America this month. It's already the 13th, so I wonder when she plans to return. I decide to ask her. Oh yeah. Oh, that's not good. That means it's gonna be expensive as hell if you forgot to get a plane ticket. I got too caught up in improving the phone wave. Going public with a timely machine will send the world into an uproar. We also plan to expose CERN, remember? You may not be able to go back to America for some time. I guess you're right. I should call- I should call Mama and let her know. Oh, Looks like things are going to get busy. Naturally, I want Kurizu to stay with us to the end. Hmm. A little bit after we turn to the lab, Mayuri gets back. Hi, Mayuri. Doo -doo -doo. Okairi, uh, seems Mayuri went to Lugako's. Suzuha shows up a few minutes later and our development council comes to an order. Why is Suzuha here? Did we say? Did we call for the members? Daru ordered three pizzas. We also lined up all the snacks we bought on the table. It's just like the party we had a few days ago to cheer up Suzuha. Except we, the audience, never got to see that. Mayuri wanted to decorate the room, but since everyone's tired, I dismissed it as unnecessary. Looks like Suzuha managed to retrieve her jacket from Mr. Braun. Man, that... Oh, wait, I, I... I skipped what she said. Oops. Man, that was terrible. I was stuck looking like an exhibitionist all day. I mean, you were just... Dude, you were just wearing a, a tank top. It's it's fine. Um, the Braun tube workshop's closed. Suzuha made sure the 42-inch CRT was turned off, so there's no need to fear any malfunction from the time leap machine. A heavy sigh escapes my throat. I realize that I've been tense and nervous since the time leap machine was completed. Now, I can finally relax. The topic of the time leap machine has become taboo. Even Kudisu doesn't bring it up during the meeting. Why did you order the exact same pizzas before? I opened the pizza boxes to find the exact same ones he got for Suzuha's party. Because I like it. Duh. Naturally, I'm not amused. What's up, Mighty? I called Ferishan and Lukachan, but they said they couldn't come. Okay. Oh, do they have plans? A Ryanet tournament? Okay. Okay. And Lukachan seemed embarrassed for some reason. Maybe she thinks you'll make her wear a costume again. You still haven't convinced her to cosplay? Then what was the point of completing the costume? She said it was embarrassing. I keep telling her cuteness is justice, but she never listens. Dude, I, I don't even- I don't know if saying the catchphrase of what you want her to cosplay is going to make her want to cosplay. I'm gonna put it out there, okay? Oh, Kurisu doesn't know how to react. She blushes, and Mayuri starts teasing her like a drunk old man. There's no alcohol at this party, of course. Yeah, because everyone here is a minor, even Rintaro, right? Uh, Komima's coming up. Oh, Khan. I can't make something new, but I have a costume of post-awakening Sarah from Blood Toot. Those words just came out of my mouth. No idea what they mean. Uh, I think the size is just right for Christian too. Me? Cosplay? Kurisu looks conflicted. Then she murmurs... Oh yeah, because she's a- she's an at channel. She's a 4chaner, so yeah, of course she'd be interested in cosplay. She sure could have fooled us before, pretending to have no interest in otaku culture. But I refuse to do it in public, though. You don't have to show anyone, but eventually you'll want them to see. The cosplay demon compels you. The cosplay demon? Yeah, to be fair, we're making one right now, so... That reminds me, uh, you're always wearing that cute uniform. What school is it from? Oh, this? Kurisu lifts up her necktie. I attended Ayamain for two weeks. I modeled this outfit after their uniform. Ayamain. What is that? Uh, Ayamain Women's Academy, a private school for girls in the Kudanshita neighborhood of Tokyo. An academic powerhouse. Ayamain is a popular destination for foreign exchange students. Got it. 
Oh, their uniform is really cute. I'll bring the costume tomorrow, okay? Will you try it on then? Sure. Looks like Kurisu approves of the cuteness is justice philosophy. Okay. When's the, <laughs> the, 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 the cosplay shoot? Yeah, Daru. I guess you haven't changed, brother. Maybe you shouldn't bother. Okay, so they were just talking about... They're just talking about the cosplay. Um, they're just talking about the cosplay and how embarrassing it might be for Kurisu to wear it. And now Suzuha is talking. <laughs> Suzuha speaks her tone sharp. She's... She's scowling at Kurisu again. Suddenly, the atmosphere in the room changes. You're asking for trouble by trusting Makise Kurisu. What's that supposed to mean? Oh my god, what the hell is going on here? This is actually kind of a raw photo. Hold on, let me... Yeah, this goes kind of, this goes kind of hard, I'm not gonna lie. This, this photo as a whole. Um, naturally, my strong-willed assistant isn't one to back down from a fight. Sparks fly between the two girls. I've been meaning to ask, did I do something to you? Not to me, but I know everything you have done. What do you mean? I've done nothing to be guilty of. Perhaps, but I know your true nature. Wow, you can see into my heart? That's groundbreaking technology. I'd love to hear how it works. It's not science, it's a prediction. So you're just making it up. I know. Uh, I know. Uh-oh. We've got a situation here. <laughs> yeah, Mighty clings to me with teary eyes. Stop them from fighting! Yeah, this looks like a job for the one and only Hoin Kyoma. I insert myself between the two girls. Break it up, you two. I, Hoin Kyoma, shall decide this shall decide this dispute. They both glare at me. Although I'm afraid for my life, I harden my resolve. The mission must succeed. First, I focus on Kurisu. Assistant, I didn't raise you this way. You didn't raise me at all. If you want to become a true mad scientist, you must learn to keep your emotions in check even as you cackle your way to victory. Nobody asked you, and I'm already a scientist. Oh, jeez. She's rebuffing everything that we do. Alright, shift your focus. Sh yeah, 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 shift your focus. Warrior, your enemy is stern, remember? You must conserve your strength for Ragnarok. I warned you before, Okabe Rintaro. Makize Kurisu is a threat. Wh You're going to mention that here now? Oh, what's this about, Okabe? Uh-oh, their eyes are like laser beams pouring into my skull. I want nothing more than to flee for my life. But Mayuri's watching me anxiously. I need to defuse the situation. Oh, here he comes! Here he comes! Uh, Hoin Kyoma, he's, he's using his defense mechanism, which is just to act like an idiot. Looks like neither of you is willing to back down, so be it. So be it. Fight to your heart's content. Fight until there is no more fight to be had. Then share a manly handshake by the river and let friendship blossom. Okay, but in the future when it comes time for you two to venture out into the real world. I hope you remember one thing. Nobody likes a moog. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Getting yelled at by both of them at the same time said shivers down my spine. I don't think I've ever seen... Yeah, Suzuha hasn't acted like this towards Okabe before. It's coming. I quickly seize my right arm. Yeah. The, the, uh, the difficult social interaction is coming, so you have to seize your right arm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. I turn around and head back to Mayadi. He's retreating. At this rate, I'll end up hurting those two. I have no choice. The rest is up to you. Mayadi puffs her cheeks out and goes over to the two girls. Mayadi, she doesn't like it when you fight. Let's all get along, okay? There you go. It was that easy. The two combatants reluctantly comply. I expected this would happen. Mayadi is the oil that keeps the gears of this lab churning along. Throbbing in my- Shut up! There was no throbbing in your right arm. Oh my god. Man, why was it- I mean, I had a feeling that something like that would happen, but the outright confrontation was a little scary. Just... Suzuha blatantly saying things like that? And... Makize firing right back? Don't like it. Dado comes over to chat with Suzuha, and gradually peace returns to the lab. Kurizu is in the development room making a call, probably to her mother in America. I sit on the sofa and watch TV while sipping Dr. Pepper. The TV is running a game show where contestants guess the prices of popular items at high-class restaurants. Okay, sure. Mighty sits down next to me. She peels a banana and begins eating it. What's good, man? What's up? Mighty slowly looks around the lab, smiling all the while. It has been really lively here these past few weeks, right? So when is it all going to come crumbling down? When is it all going to go wrong? I'm, I'm waiting. It is right now? Is Makize? Is she going to be unable to resist um, 
the 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 temptation of time leaping and is she gonna do it without anybody's consent? It's my guess. That is my guess. I'm saying it right now so you guys can so you guys know, okay? Yeah, I guess it has. I established the future gadget laboratory around the time I entered college. It was the first step in my plan to bring chaos to the world. That was around the middle of March this year, which means it's been almost five months. Oh, I thought the future gadget lab has been around for longer, but I guess I'm stupid. Not half a month after it was established, Mayuri showed up, I'm still not sure why, and became a lab mem. For about a month, it was just me and Mayuri. Then in early May, I finally got Dado to join. All it took was telling him that the lab is just a three minute walk from Mei Queen Yan Yan. This location on the outskirts of Akiba has always been quiet. Mayuri isn't the type to object to every little thing like Kurisu, nor the type to make dumb jokes like Dado, so the lab was very peaceful back in those days. It was quite a pleasant place to be. And now the lab mem count has increased to eight. It happened in the blink of an eye, or so it seems. It, it has been over the space of a couple of days, hasn't it? They didn't come today, but Lukako visits occasionally, and Ferris is a familiar face at May Queen Nyan Nyan, or at least she was before May Queen disappeared. I remember feeling out of place the first time I came to Akiba, but now it's like a second home. It's fun, it is fun. Mayuri too seems pleased by the increase in lab mems. Um, now that... Now that there are eight lab mems, Mayushi thinks it's getting a little cramped in here. First, we don't have enough chairs. The sofa only has room for two. Then there's Dado's personal desk chair. Those are the only chairs in the lounge. Oh gosh. There are some pipe chairs in the development room, but they need to stay there. We should buy more. Do you have money, Okari? New chairs will take all my savings. Then I'd need to get a part-time job again. I guess you can use some of my salary. We need a new microwave too, otherwise I can't warm up my juicy chicken number one. That... That's a crying shame. We need fried chicken to fuel ourselves. Yeah. Sorry about that, man. Maya, she truly is the homie to end all homies. She's like, yeah, you can take some of my money. I mean, if we really need chairs, I'll I'll shell out for it. Cutting off Mayuri's chicken supply might actually kill her. But Mayuri, when we, when we turn over the time leap machine, the reward money will solve all of our problems. Will it be enough to pay for chairs in a microwave on top of the higher rent? It'll be enough. More than enough. Wow, that's great, Okarin. Why are you so happy? Just look, we've made so many friends. There's Darukun, Chris-chan, Luka-chan, Suzu-san, Moika-san, Ferris-chan, Bronsan, san Nae-chan, and more. She gazes wistfully into the distance. In the spring, when you started this lab, you seemed so lonely. But now you're fine. You don't need me to be your hostage anymore. Whoa, where is this coming from? Oh my gosh. I mean, she probably saw right through Rinted also. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. What do you... What do you mean? I try to ask, but before I can finish... Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, wow, this is not... This is not what I expected at all. An urgent news bulletin appears on the TV. Terrorist bomb threat suspends Yamanote Sobu Keihin Tohoku lines. The subtitles read, okay, I gotta stop reading things ahead. A bomb threat? Hang on, those lines all pass through Akiba. How is Mayushi gonna get home? Oh dear, I should call home. Are we all gonna stay in the lab? A bomb threat. I don't know why, but I've got a bad feeling about this. Only the lines passing through Akihabara are suspended as if that were the target. Wait, could that be it? Could the bomb be at Akihabara Station? I get a cold feeling in my stomach. I need to know. You've completed the time leap machine, right? Huh? Well, yeah. Okay. I just remembered I've got something to do. I'm going out. Suzuha leaves the lab without another word. This can't be a coincidence, right? This can't be a coincidence. There's no way that she's just going out. What's wrong with her? Suzuha is acting strange. Is it related to the bomb threat? Why did she just ask about the time leap machine? Something occurs to me. The two threatening emails I received. Uh, 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 uh. We're watching you. No, no, I don't want to see it again. You know too much. Who sent them? And there's more. Words and images flash through my head. CERN. The LHC. Jellymen. The Z program. Government secrets. The organization. Men in Black, the Committee of 300, the Time Leap Machine. What did Kurisu say? Man, I got. I mean, I had chills from the very beginning when 
means that I was saying stuff, but she's not wrong. Taken separately, each of these elements was insignificant. But if I consider them part of a single line, they all point to one inescapable truth. We've come too far. Fear seizes my heart in an icy grip. I can feel anxiety eating at my brain. I can't breathe. Is he having a panic attack? Even though it's hot and humid, my body shivers. Should we run? Get out while we still can? We can't use the trains. What about the subway? Or would a taxi be better? Nobody's saying anything. Nobody's doing anything. What should we do? Suddenly, there's a softness against my hand. I look down to see Mayuri's hand holding mine. When I look up, I see worry written on her face. It's okay. I'm just being paranoid. It's all a coincidence. Tomorrow, we'll get rid of the time leap machine. Then we can forget that all of this happened. Pretend it was just a dream. Oh, this is, this is worse than as if they had decided to experiment with it. This is worse emotionally because at some point, there is some awareness that they have gone too far. That they have looked too deeply into this and worked too hard on something that they never should have made in the first place. And so when they look back, after doing whatever it is they might end up doing, they cannot even find comfort in the knowledge that they did not know what they were doing. Because right now, right now, Rintaro knows, and he acknowledges it, not even to anyone, just to himself. So if something goes horribly wrong, at least for him, there is nobody for him to blame but, to blame, but him himself, and everyone else that worked on it. We never invented a time machine. I don't need money. As long as we can forget about today and welcome tomorrow, we'll be okay. Won't we? But my anxiety doesn't go away. I look over Mayuri's head at the entrance to the lab. The door is unlocked. Anyone could just waltz right in. I hear sirens wailing a few streets away. The bomb threat has occupied an uproar, yet here... In our corner of Akiba, it's so quiet. Mighty squeezes my hand with her warm, slender fingers. I squeeze back. Oh! What? Why? The next thing I know, the door slams open. Who the hell are all of you guys? Five men burst into the lab. Their movements are swift and sure. Professional. Each of them is carrying a gun. They spread out just inside the door and aim their weapons at us. It all happens so fast, no one has time to scream. The men are foreigners, a mix of races, dressed casually in colorful shirts and shorts or jeans, so plain clothes. But their arms are thick with muscle, and their eyes are hard and cold as ice. Two of them are holding pistols, the other three have assault rifles. AK-47s and Akiva? Is this some kind of joke? One thing is certain, these guys aren't tourists. Hands in the air, nobody move. The dark-skinned crew cut man barks in order. It feels like I'm dreaming. Did I fall asleep watching an action movie? This is the first time so many people have gathered in this room. Suddenly, the lab feels small. What an odd thing to be thinking at a time like this. The first to obey is Daru. Then Kurisu raises her hands. Then me. Last is Mayuri. Silence. Time seems to grind to a halt. The men say nothing, but their guns remain steady, muzzles pointed at us. On the TV, a comedian laughs. What is this? Are we on candid camera? Then I hear a new sound coming from outside, the sound of high heels. A woman is coming up the stairs. There's no way it's Moiko, right? Is it? There's no shot, right? Are these men waiting for her? Is she their leader? A squad of battle-hardened commandos led by a beautiful woman. It's like something out of a manga. Nothing seems real. Before long, the woman appears. Oh, dude. All the, all the homies got their hands in the air. Kiryu Moiko. Well, I mean, we haven't seen her for days, and the last time we saw her, she was acting crazy funny. So, I guess it would make sense for me to call it, right? It's just sort of... I I just... Uh, look. Good guess, alright? Just a good guess. The part-time editor, the male demon Shining Finger, who was never seen without her phone. Lab Mem number five. Moika? She's their leader? The least imposing woman I've ever met? Even now, she doesn't meet my stare. Her eyes are aimed down at the floor. What's going on here? Moika-san? We're taking the time machine. As always, her words are barely audible. It's ridiculous. Laughable. 
and yet I can't laugh. My heart is a jackhammer in my chest. The inside of my mouth is drier than a desert. I stay still with my hands in the air. Okabe Rintaro. The three of you will come with us. No Mayuri? I don't understand. Why is Moika here? I don't know, but I have to ask. What's going on here? I can't answer that. This is a joke. Right? Moika shakes her head. You don't need to know. You can't resist. Come with us. W where No reply. She doesn't intend to answer that, either. Dangerous. These guys are dangerous. Look at their guns. Nothing good can happen if we go with them. I try to refuse, but my voice catches in my throat. I can't stop staring at their guns. Are they real? They're not going to start shooting, are they? I'm not going anywhere until you answer. You can't refuse. You have nowhere to run. We have men stationed throughout Akihabara. Wait. Something clicks in my head. It was them. They sent the bomb threat. They stopped the trains. Why? To keep us here? Just for that? I don't want to hurt anyone. The three of you, come with us. Why? Kyurisu was just kept silent until now finally opens her mouth. Why just the three of us? That's when I realized that Mighty wasn't included in Moika's demand. She only wants Kurisu, Daru, and me. I'm not answering your questions. Come with us, it's her only choice. We're not getting anywhere. Oh, oh man, this guy, I mean, I'd be scared, I'd be scared too. Daru's voice is shaking, I turn my head to look at him, he's deathly pale. Don't you think we should do what she says? But unless she tells me the reason, honestly, I have no idea what to do. My heart is still fluttering in my chest, this seems more like a dream than reality. I'm not a military otaku. I've never seen a real gun. The black shine of their weapons looks somehow tacky. They lack the imposing feel you expect. I'd believe her if she told me they were fake. Mighty suddenly speaks up. M moika san you're a lab mem too, aren't you? It's as if Mighty asked my question for me. Moika was a strange woman, but I welcomed her as a lab mem all the same. What is she thinking right now? An answer. Moika pulls a gun from her belt and points it at us. I realize that Moika isn't holding her phone. This is the first time I've seen her without it. Not like that matters now. Moika's gun hand is trembling. And is, it, is the situation affecting her too? It must be. She's terrified of talking to people. Our mission is to silence you. What? What? Why? What is happening? This is not what I expected. Silence us? Your refusal to come will change nothing. Does that mean she plans to kill us? Why? What did we do? Who sent you? Who are you people? We... Moika suddenly lifts her head for perhaps the third time since I've known her. She looks straight at me. Her eyes are dark and empty. Oh. Okay. Okay. All right. I I see. CERN? M4? The dark-skinned man speaks up. Is he addressing Moika? Watch your tongue. Oh, was she not supposed to tell us? Moika hangs her head again. In my head, I replay the words she just spoke. CERN. They're from CERN? Why CERN? Of course. Who else could it be? Come with us. Now. Moika raises her voice in frustration. If you continue to resist, I'll have to resort to extreme measures. Moika slowly raises her gun. She points the muzzle at... Mayuri? Oh my god. She's threatening Mayuri. My whole body instantly goes cold. Is not... Needed. Oh my god. I lunge at Moika, but the dark-skinned man is fast. The dark-skinned man is faster. Something strikes my chin with crushing force. The shock numbs my entire body. Stars explode behind my eyes. I'm surprised it didn't knock you out outright. I fall to my knees, powerless to stand. Everything goes dark. What happened? Did he hit me with the butt of his rifle? I look up. Mighty, face streaked with tears, is reaching out to me as if begging for help. Over her shoulder, I see Moika ready her gun. I try to yell stop, but my voice catches in my throat. Nothing comes out but a pitiful wheeze. Someone, anyone, please, stop her. Stop Moika. Moika's lips move. She's mumbling something. 
For CERN. For FB. For CERN. For FB. What the hell is FB? Her mouth opens and closes robotically. Her- my blood curdles. A sharp, dry crack splits the air. Time slows to a crawl. Moiko pulled the trigger. Oh, whoa! Uh... Um... Uh, 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 alright. Um... Oh my god. Oh my god. Um... Holy sh... Uh, my ID? It splashes across my face, wet and warm. Her delicate, frail body falls towards me. I catch her. Her body is limp, like a puppet with no strings. Her head and arms dangle lifelessly. The smell of gunpowder fills my nose, and then... <sighs> the smell of blood. <coughs> yeah, me too, Daru. Daru clutches his head and falls to his knees, screaming at the top of his lungs. The sound jerks me back to my senses. In my arms, Mighty takes one short, shallow breath, and then... <laughs> She's dead. Mighty's dead. Her face is covered in blood. Her blood stains my hands. It's warm. You three, come with us. Now. No more warnings. Resist and we'll kill you too. I hear a voice, but I can't comprehend what it's saying. <coughs> what is this? What's going on here? Is this a joke? We may have created a monster here. This is a dream, right? Right? I feel nothing. My mind is blank. I shake Mayuri's shoulder. Mayuri? Wake up, Mayuri. You'll catch cold if you sleep here. If you're tired, you can stay overnight, or I can take you home if you prefer. We'll ride the train back to Ikebukuro together, like we used to before Daru joined, when it was just the two of us. Memories of her smile whirl through my head, a thousand different smiles from a thousand different occasions. If I look away, she'll disappear. She always disappears. But now you're fine. You don't need me to be your hostage anymore. No, Mayuri. I still need you. Laugh for me. Like you always do. Greet me with your silly doo doo doo. Tell me it's a lie. Tell me you're all right, Mayuri. Red flames consume my mind, an inferno of rage and hate and rage and hate and the burning desire to kill everything I see. Oh, I feel like, I feel kinda cold. Oh, God, I've got goosebumps. Uh, I'm like nervous sweating. I gently lay the motionless Mayuri on the floor. I stand up. And then I fling myself at Moika. Are they gonna shoot him too? But before I can take a step, someone grabs my hand from behind. You can't. Let me go. Let me go. They'll kill you, man. Moika's gun is aimed at my head. Her finger is already on the trigger. The crazy thing is, like, Moika definitely came here. She definitely came here ready to kill people. She definitely came here ready to kill people because when she drew her gun, she had her, she had her finger in the trigger guard already. She was, even if she was trembling, she was ready to kill people. Oh, I feel like a little sick. Maybe it's because I didn't have something to eat this morning, but like, I feel a little sick. If you resist, please Okabe, just do what she says, okay? Otherwise they'll kill you too. I tear my hand from Kudusu's grip. Okay. My vision is a tunnel, with Moika on the other side. My first thought here... My first thought here is that Suzuha left because she knew that they were going to attack the lab. Is she somehow going to stop them? Is that what's going to happen? 
Is the was the terrorist was the terrorist threat a a, a a precursor to something? And Suzuha knows. Look, I I told you guys, I don't know anything about this game, but I don't know. We gotta hope for something, right? Mayuri's dead. The best of them, the purest of them, and truly the the kindest of them. She's gone. So, oh God, I feel a little queasy. She won't get away with this. She killed Mayuri in cold blood. I'll do the same to her. <laughs> Moika pulls the trigger. <laughs> the sound of the shot smites upon my eardrums. I feel a sharp pain on the side of my head. I nearly lose my balance again, but I'm still alive. What happened? I realize that Moika's gun is lying at her, he at her feet. Beside it is a small stone. Someone must have thrown it and knocked her gun aside. <laughs> Whose voice is that? Suzuha? Suddenly Suzuha's there. I was right! I was right! Holy crap! Suddenly, Suzuha is there in the doorway, knocking one, one, one man down in the blink of an eye. Before anyone can react, she darts into another man's range and delivers a piercing elbow strike to his solar plexus. The man drops to his knees, gasping for air. The remaining men turn their guns on her, but she throws the incapacitated, incapacitated man towards them to block their aim. She then slides into the feet of the man at the rear, tripping him forward, and in a single smooth flowing motion, drives her knee into the man's face as he falls. Who the hell? The dark-skinned man aims his rifle, but before he can fire, Suzuha snatches a stunned attacker's gun and shoots him. What? Blood spurts from the man's hand. Without pausing, Suzuha leaps into the air and delivers a soaring roundhouse kick to his jaw. This, this is something out of a... This is something out of a... I mean, this is a visual novel. <laughs> the next thing I know, the five men are down, and Moika's gun is aimed at Suzuha's face. But Suzuha doesn't back down. Her gun is trained on Moika's neck. Ugh. <sighs> It's a standoff. Neither moves. Silence returns to the room. Who are you? 42? The answer to the universe and everything? Suzuha's reply makes no sense. She glances at me. TV. What is she saying? Turned on. What? Suddenly, Kurisu springs up and makes a break for the development room. Don't move! That's my line! Oh, they've got a standoff going. I suddenly realize the meaning of Suzuha's words. The 42-inch TV... The 42-inch TV downstairs. It's on. That means the lifter's active. M Makise realized it right away. She wants me to use the timely machine? I look at Mayuri's body. She's lying there quietly. Her eyes are closed. They'll never open again. One of the men Suzuha knocked out starts to moan. If they wake up, it's all over. Suzuha looks at me again. Her eyes implore me to make my move. If I use this machine, I can avert Mayuri's death, but at the same time, it can fry my brain. Fry my brain? So what? What is there to fear? Mayuri is dead, shot in cold blood. This isn't right. I won't accept it. Then change it. Change the past. You have the power. Use it. I stagger into the development room. Kurisu is about to put on the headgear. I pull it away from her. Okabe. I'm going back. No, I should be the one to- I grab Kurisu's wrist as she tries to take it back. I stare into her eyes, eyes wet with tears. I will save Mayuri. But what if it fails? I ignore her and put on the headgear. Moika's last shot grazed the side of my head. My ears are still ringing and there's blood on my neck. It doesn't matter. I might fail. I might even die. But I have to try. It's my only chance to save Mayuri. Kurisu bites her lip and activates the X68000. One of them's moving. Get in there. Kill them. Tim. Okay. All right, the crew cut man staggers into the development room. Acting purely on instinct, I grab future gadget number four, mode snake, from the shelf and flick the switch. White smoke instantly fills the room, rendering it impossible to see. God, she's saying to kill them, and he's blindly firing into the room. They're kids. Uh, Okabe. Did she get shot? Are you sure? Are you sure about this, really? Do it, Kurisu. Activate the machine. Oh, pain flares in my right arm. Was I shot? It doesn't matter. I see blue-white light shining through the smoke. The discharge is starting. The light rapidly grows brighter. The floor begins to shake. The singularity is open. I crouch down, holding the headset steady with one hand. To who? To who? To whom? To whom? To you? To... Wait for me, Mayuri. I won't die here. I'll cross through time to save you. Leap, my memories. Leap to the past. The world explodes into light.
8, 13, Friday, it was 7 o'clock, just about. I saw that. Is that a couple hours before? That would make sense, wouldn't it? Chapter 6. Metaphysics. Necrosis. I'm sweating, guys. I'm sweating from my forehead. I'm sweating from my back. I'm like, I'm nervous sweating. Mayuri? Mayuri? I'm like, I'm, oh, I'm, 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 I'm shaking a little. No matter how many times I call her name, Mayuri doesn't answer. Mayuri is standing in front of a grave, gazing at the sky. The grave belongs to her grandmother, who died when Mayuri was 11 years old. Her parents were always busy with work, so her grandmother was her only companion. All right, look. Guys, I think that's all the time that we have for today. I'll leave it here. I think this is a good cliffhanger. I want to know what happens, but I'm, I'm scared. I... Oh, that was so good, but it also sucked. Oh, my God. I don't think I could show, like, her full... The full... The full, like, uh, the image on the, on the screen. Regardless, we'll have to see what happens next. So, I hope that you guys enjoyed that. I did. And I'll see you guys in the next video. So, for now, have a good rest of your day. And I will see you soon. Bye.